the river god. Thick jungles surrounded Sarah and Jamie on all sides. The heat drew wisps of steam from the earth. Huge flowers reached out to the sun. Gorgeous butterflies flapped by, and a million insects hummed and whirred. all over my hand. Ugh. I think I've upset its friends. Come on, Sarah. Look out! Oh, no! I've stepped in something. Ugh. A sort of huge red flower. Yuck! It smells. Like oh. rotting meat. Ugh. I've had enough of the jungle already. Maybe this track will lead to a village. Right. Are we anyway? Somewhere in Africa? That can't be right. How would you know? See those monkeys swinging through the trees? Yep, so what? They're swinging by their tails. So we must be in South America. Only South American monkeys have prehensile tails. <laughs> what a know-all! What was that? An arrow! They're being attacked! Run! Several figures covered in blue dye rushed out of the jungle darkness. In their hands they carried long spears. Each man's hair was drawn up into a long spike tipped with red like blood. Sarah and Jamie ran as fast as they could, but every time they looked back, they could see the bobbing spiky heads getting closer and closer. Realized you were in a spot of bother, so thought I'd treat those spiky blue blighters to the call of the Sakuriju. It seems to have scared them off. What do you think? Impressive. Thanks a million. We were goners. Think nothing of it. I'm sweet. Captain Daffodil Sweet. You may have heard the name before. Uh, don't think so. I'm Sarah and this is my brother, Jamie. Oh. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Ah, here are the other members of my expedition, Charlie and Bert. We go everywhere together. Oh, oh no. Why have they got a canoe stuck over their heads? Jungle disguise. Got to move like a chameleon when you're hunting the Sakuriju. Excuse me, Captain Sweet. Call me Daff. Everyone else does. What's a Sakuriju? Aha! Just between ourselves. It's the reason I'm here in the upper reaches of the Amazon. Really? Yes, I'm searching for it. The local people call it the Sakuriju. We'd call it a living dinosaur. What kind of dinosaur? <laughs> Difficult to say. Could be a giant snake or maybe a plesiosaur. A long-necked meat-eater over ten meters long. A sort of Loch Ness monster? That's right. It seems the Sakuriju lives in water. Probably a tributary of the Amazon nobody's ever found. Amazing. Have you actually seen it? Not yet. Uh, but last night we think we heard it. I've been practicing its cry ever since. Want to hear it again? Uh, not right now. Slight headache. Oh, got just a thing for that. Chew on a couple of cuckoo leaves. Thanks. What do they taste like? <laughs> Ugh, disgusting! <laughs> Still, the horrible taste takes your mind off the headache. It's what? What did I tell you? The jungle's a great big chemist shop. Amazing plants are growing all around us. Oh, watch out, Jamie. What's wrong? That tree trunk you nearly bumped into is covered in spines. They're poisonous. The bark's poisonous. The sap's poisonous. And the leaves bring you out in a rash. Shake the tree and the fruits fall off and explode all over you. Guess what they're full of? Poison? Yep. Oh, and I forgot. One sniff of the flowers and you go stark, raving mad. It won't make any difference to Jamie. Ha ha. Oh, yes. This place is full of dangers. You could say it's a jungle out there. Luckily, you've fallen in with one of the greatest living experts at roughing it. 
We'll bivouac here for the night. Tomorrow we track down the Sakura Jewel. Captain Daff, can we borrow a tent? Tents? Never use them. No bally use in the jungle. What's that? Things crawl in. No, take a hammock and uh, rig it up in that tree. Charlie and Bert will show you how. Sleep tight. Hope the bugs don't bite. <laughs> Jamie, wake up! I think I heard a snake. <coughs> That's not Captain Daff. That's the real thing. Wake up, Jamie! <gasps> oh. You'd sleep through an earthquake. Breakfast ready, Captain. Captain. Right, I'm starving. What is it? Corned beef and skimmed milk. Oh, well, never mind. We'll try some anyway. Come on, Jamie. Last one down the tree gets double helping. If you don't mind me saying so, Captain... Yes? Daffodil Sweet is a pretty odd name for an explorer. Nonsense. It's made me what I am today. My parents were keen gardeners and had a thing about bulbs, hence Daffodil. A great name, a distinctive name. Oh, I'm glad mine called me Jamie. Here, look at these. Newspaper cuttings. Daffodil climbs Everest. Daffy's blooming marvel. This one's my favourite. Prime Minister picks Daffodil. You're famous. Well, uh, <clears throat> fairly. What are you going to do when you find the monster? Why, bag it, of course. Do you mean shoot it? Naturally. Otherwise, there'd be no proof I'd found it. I'm not happy about killing it, but those scientist chaps are a jolly hard lot to convince. We'll see about that. Before we move off again, has anyone got a camera? Uh, yes, and it's a bit of a nuisance. It takes up too much room in my pack. I'll carry it. I'm a photographer. You fibber. Remember that project we did at school? Flowers of Field and Hedgerow? I took the pics for that. Well, help yourself from my pack. It's over there. Right, let's go. Jamie, take this. What's in it? Cartridges. You won't find shooting the Sakori juice so easy without them. Uh, so uh, and I nicked a couple out of this jacket as well. That's stealing. How else are we going to protect the dinosaur? It may be the only one left. Go on, stuff them in your pockets. Oh, all right. But I don't like it. The expedition travelled on. Sometime later, they stumbled out of a thick patch of jungle and came upon a muddy river. Right. We'll have a look for signs of the security Get the canoe ready, lads. Right, right you are, Captain. Captain. One, one, two, three... three. Hey, look at this! What's up? It's horrible. They're only white stones. They're not. They're skulls. Skulls, undoubtedly. Human by the look of them, and bleached white by the sun. And someone's stuck a post in the water. Yeah, it's got splashes of red on it. Do you see? Yes. Maybe we've stumbled on some sort of religious shrine. Oh, well. Let's help Charlie and Bert load up the canoe. Ah! They've got her! A spike head! I'll fire over their heads. That should stop them. Curse it! Where are my cartridges? I'm sure I put some in my jacket. Looking for these? Yes! We took them to stop me shooting the dinosaur. I'm sorry. That's all right, old chap. It takes guts to own up when you've made a bloomer. What are they going to do with her? Can we catch up with them? I've got a notion that could just work. If that pile of skulls over there is a shrine, I reckon the men who've snatched her plan to sacrifice her here in this very place. We'll lie low and catch them in the act. For several hours, Captain Sweet, Jamie, Charlie and Bert concealed themselves in bushes near the skulls. At last, with the setting sun painting the river with oranges and reds, they had rustling the jungle nearby. Here they come. Fire in the air. We don't want blood on our hands. They've got Sarah. They've tied her up and gagged her. Hold your fire. Yes, sir. They're tying her to the post in the river. 
Dear, Charlie needs medical attention quickly. Germs breed like wildfire in the jungle. We'll stay here tonight and look for help in the morning. Why don't we go back in New? We could follow the river downstream. Rivers always lead somewhere. A real snorter of an idea. What's more, those blue chaps will be waiting for us in the jungle. We'll outmaneuver them. under the water. They're circling us. Oh. oh! It's a young one. Must think we're some sort of log. Oh. Oh. There's his mother! There's a whole family of them! There's something different about the cry. It's like they want to play. I've got them! I shot a whole roll of film! Young woman, I owe you a debt of gratitude. You were right all along. Guns aren't the answer. Every one of these animals must be conserved at all costs. By sunset the following day, the expedition reached a village by the river. Captain Sweet found a doctor to treat Charlie's wound and he made a miraculous recovery. The doctor also had the right chemicals to develop Sarah's precious roll of film. Shakes. Ooh. The jungle looks so peaceful from here. Jamie, Sarah, I've got the photographs. Sarah, you're a genius. Oh, I wouldn't say that. The first ever pictures of the Sakuriju, the river god. God, I must say, I like dinosaurs a lot better as pictures. The young one looks almost cute. <laughs> <laughs> like a kitten or a guinea pig. <laughs> Listen. It's almost as if they're saying goodbye. The music in The River God is from Bolero and Pavan for the Dead Infanta, both by Maurice Ravel. Bolero is made up of just a single melody, played over and over, getting louder all the time. A flute plays a slow, hypnotic tune first, and a side drum sets the marching beat.
getting louder all the time, a saxophone joins in. A drunken trombone blares out the tune. louder and louder as the strings also take their turn. Close to the end, the whole orchestra shifts up a key before crashing back to the original one. The van for the dead infanta begins with a dreamy tune played first by the French horn. strings. Rippling harp as accompaniment, the strings begin the main tune for the last time. of the highlights from Ravel's Bolero and Pavan for the Dead Infanta. You're bound to discover more every time you listen.